everyone. Today we are making the Every Girl sweater, which was actually one of my very first sweater designs, so I'm really excited to get this video tutorial ready for you. I use Karen Cakes for my Every Girl, Every Girl sweaters. I love the self-striping. I love all the different color combinations. You don't have to worry about making your own color combinations. It's all done for you with the Karen Cakes. Of course, you can use any worst weight yarn you'd like. It could be solid, striped, variegated, whatever worst weight yarn you would like to use. And you'll also need an H five millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, and a yarn needle. So let's go ahead and get started with our Every Girl sweater. So this sweater will start with the ribbing along the bottom. It's two rectangles and we're gonna sew those rectangles together um, to make the sweater. It's such an easy pattern. It's really a great beginner pattern. Basically, if you can crochet a rectangle and know how to crochet in the round, you will be golden for this sweater. It's so, so easy. So, so let's go ahead and get started with the ribbing along the bottom of our sweater. So I'm gonna get my yarn on my hook. Oopsies. And I'm going to chain nine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna single crochet across this row. I'm gonna start in the second chain from my hook. I always like to start in these back bumps of my chain. I feel like it's so much easier to see and work my hook into. So there's one, two, second chain from my hook. I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, and yarn over, pull through two for my first single crochet. I'm gonna do that across my chain. All right, there's row one of my ribbing. And in this next row, you're really gonna start to see the ribbing start to take shape. So I'm gonna chain one, and I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna do a single crochet in my first stitch. So I'm gonna insert my hook into both of those top loops, yarn over and pull up a loop, and yarn over, pull through two for my first single crochet. Now in the next six stitches, I'm gonna um, do a single crochet in the back loop only. So you have two loops on the top of your stitch. Usually when you do a single crochet, you insert your hook into both of those top loops. I'm only going to insert my hook into this back one and work a single crochet. I'm gonna do that again in the next stitch. I'm gonna insert my hook into just the back loop. I'm gonna leave this front loop alone so that it kind of pushes forward and that's what's gonna create my ribbing. So I'm gonna insert my hook only into that back loop and work a single crochet. That single crochet back loop only. I'm gonna do that all the way across to my last stitch. So I have one more single crochet back loop only. And I'm to my last stitch of the row. And in my last stitch, I'm gonna do a regular single crochet. So I'm going to insert my hook into both of those top loops and work my single crochet. And you can see how these uh, front loops that we didn't work our hook into are really popped forward and it's gonna create that ribbing that we want across the bottom of our sweater. So I'm gonna repeat that row for my next row. I'm gonna chain one and turn my work. I'm gonna do a regular single crochet in my first stitch. And then I'm gonna do a single crochet back loop only in my next stitch. So there's my two top loops. I'm gonna insert my hook only into this back one and I'm gonna repeat that across to my last stitch. So I'm gonna have six single crochet back loop only across. Here's my last single crochet back loop only. 
And then here's my last stitch of my row. I'm going to insert my hook into both of those top loops and make a regular single crochet. And there we have our second row of ribbing. So it's kind of, you could see it on both sides. It's going to create kind of this bumpy um, zigzag almost look across the bottom of our sweater. So I'm going to continue repeating that row. Chain one, turn, single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet back loop only in the next six. and then single crochet in the last stitch. And there you go. You're gonna go ahead and repeat that row, single crochet, single crochet back loop only in six stitches, and then single crochet in your last stitch. You're gonna repeat that to row 64 for a size small, row 70 for a medium, 76 for a large, row 82 for an extra large, row 88 for a 2X, and row 94 for a 3X. So here is my finished ribbing. I did um, a size small, so I have 64 rows of ribbing. This ribbing is the width of your sweater when you turn it this way. It's the width of your sweater, and you can make it any width that you like. It doesn't need to be a certain multiple or number of stitches. Um, this can be absolutely any width that you need. So go ahead and continue adding rows or take out rows as you need to make it whatever size you need for your project. So here I am at my last row of the ribbing and now I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start to create the body of my sweater. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work this way. And I'm going to be working across this long edge of my ribbing. I'm going to do one row of single crochet. I will need one single crochet at the end of each row of my ribbing. So since I have 64 rows of ribbing, I will have 64 single crochet in this first row of the body of my sweater. So I'm going to single crochet at the end of my ribbing. There is kind of an obvious spot where you could insert your hook right here in between the stitches. And if I did that, it kind of creates that little hole right there. And I don't like that. So I don't like to put my insert my hook in the obvious place. I like to kind of hide it in there a little bit. Maybe in the middle of a stitch, I go kind of one stitch down. So it's a little more seamless and it's kind of hidden in there a little better. So I yarn over and pull up my loop and yarn over, pull through two to work my first single crochet. Now I'm gonna do that in the end of the next row. And again, I could go right under this first stitch, but that's going to kind of create a hole and I don't want that. So I'm going to go into this second stitch right in the middle of it and insert my hook there and then work my single crochet. And I'm going to do that across. So again, I'm going to go down to this second stitch down, insert my hook in the middle of that stitch. I'm going to hide it yarn over, pull up a loop, and work my single crochet. And I'm going to do that all the way across. Working one single crochet at the end of each row of ribbing. So you should have the same number of single crochets as you do rows of ribbing. And now you can start to see when you um, work one stitch down and don't put your insert your hook in the obvious place, it doesn't create those holes. And just look how seamless it looks. It looks like it's all one piece, not like you're going in opposite direction. It looks like it's meant to be that way. So it just makes it a little more seamless. <clears throat> Here's my last stitch. 
of this first row of single crochet for the body. So I did my base row for the body of the sweater, one row of single crochet, working one single crochet at the end of each ribbing row. So you should have the same number of single crochet as you do rows of ribbing. So for the next row and for the rest of the sweater, you're going to do rows of double crochet. So I will chain two and turn my work. And this chain two does not count as a stitch. So I'm going to start in this very first stitch with my first double crochet. So I'll yarn over, insert my hook into the very first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I'm going to repeat that all the way across my row. So yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Repeat that all the way across. Here's the last couple stitches for row two. A row of all double crochet. Now you can repeat row two for the remainder of your sweater. Um, you're going to repeat that to row 33 for a small, um, 36 for a medium, 39 for large, 42 for extra large, 45 for 2x, and 48 for 3x. Again, um, this is going to be the length of your sweater and it really can be any length that you want. So definitely add or take out rows as needed for whatever length of sweater that you want. So go ahead and continue row two until your sweater is um, to the row for the size that you want or just the length that you want for your sweater. Here I have my completed one side of the sweater. Um, I went ahead and repeated that one double crochet row all the way to the correct row for the size I'm making. I'm making a size small for this sample, but all of the directions for the different sizes are linked down below in the description box, um, either in the free written pattern or the PDF in my shops. So here we have one side of the sweater completed and you're going to go ahead and repeat this exact pattern one more time for a total of two panels. So this could be the front of the sweater and then you're going to repeat this all again for the back of the sweater. So here I have both of my panels are complete. I have the front and the back both done. They're both the exact same pattern that I've done twice. So now what we need to do, we need to sew our front and back together. So the first thing I like to do is leave a really long end in the beginning and the end of my sweater so that I can use it for sewing. And I like to line them up opposite. So I turned them um, so that I have one long end on, on this side and then one long end up on this side so I can use them both to sew the shoulders shut. So that one, I already have yarn attached for sewing and it'll give me less ends to weave in. So you will need a yarn needle, some scissors, and I would recommend also using some stitch markers. And you'll also want to use um, a measuring tape so you can measure you know, the size of the space for the neckline and the size of the space for the sleeves. So you're going to line up the top, the top edges of your front and back panels. I'm going to go ahead and take um, a stitch marker and I'm going to join these top corners. Okay. And then I'm going to leave, I don't know, uh, about a 10 inch, maybe nine and a half inch um, space at the top for the neckline. So I'm going to I'll go back and count, but for now, I just kind of put it kind of where I think I want my shoulders to be sewn. So that's about where I want them. I can also take this and you can hold it up to yourself and kind of see um, if that's a good width for your neckline, if that's aware about where you want it. That's kind of how I do it just to get a basic starting point 
for where I want to sew the, sew the shoulders. And then now I'm going to count my stitches and make sure that it's even on both sides. They were both exactly 19 stitches in from the side. So that works out perfectly. I'm going to thread my long end through my needle. And I'm going to just whip stitch from here to here. So I'll go ahead and take out my stitch marker. And I'm going to insert my needle through the very first stitch and pull it through. And I'm going to repeat that all the way across. So I tied it off and woven that end, and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So now that we have sewn the shoulders closed, we're going to sew the sides closed and we're going to leave a space right here for the armhole where we're going to make the sleeve. So again, you're going to need your tape measure. Um, for a size small, I like to leave about a 7 inch space for the sleeve. I'm going to go about right there and again, in this can be any size that you want for your sleeve if you want a bigger or smaller, whatever size you want for sleeve. Just go ahead and measure it up and um, put your stitch marker right where you want it. In the written pattern, there are um, suggestions for the different sizes for what your sleeve, your armhole depth should be. I'm going to make us about 7 inches for a size small. I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker right there. And then I'm going to trace along that row put it in the same place on the other side. I'm going to go down here and I will place a stitch marker at the beginning. And because this is a longer space that I'm sewing than the shoulders were, I am going to put one kind of in the middle. Actually, I'll probably put two in the middle. Just to keep myself lined up as I sew. So now I'm going to thread this end through my yarn needle and I'm going to sew the side closed with the whip stitch just like I did for the shoulders.
Now that we are all done with our sewing, our ends are woven in, we can go ahead and turn this right side out. So here I am at the bottom of one of my armholes. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna join my yarn right here at the bottom of an armhole. And we're going to start crocheting around around the armhole to start our sleeve. Pull my yarn through and chain one. And we are going to single crochet around the sleeve. Even though most of our sweater and the, the rest of the sleeve will be done in double crochet, I like to do the first round in single crochet just to give a nice clean starting edge. And as a general rule, I will put two single crochet at the end of each of these double crochet rows around. I don't generally put um, end of row stitch counts for sleeves because they may vary um, by a couple stitches, especially depending on size, depending on your tension, depending on um, maybe you only put one single crochet in one end and two in another. More important than the number of stitches in a sleeve is that you crochet around evenly. That's the most important part. It's more important than your actual stitch count. So as long as you are crocheting around the sleeve evenly, then you are good to go. So I'm going to do two single crochet, roughly two single crochet, at the end of each row around this sleeve. I've completed that first round of my sleeve, so now I'm going to join to the first stitch of the round with a slip stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into both top loops of my first stitch, and I'm going to slip stitch to that first one. And you might want to take note of how many stitches you have in this first round. Um, like I said, the exact number doesn't count as long as it's worked evenly around but you do want to make sure that the other sleeve is the same as this one. So if you would like to take note of how many stitches you have here so that the next, the second sleeve is the same. So we're going to go ahead and start our second round. I'm going to chain two and I'm going to turn my work because we will be working in turned rounds for our sleeve. And this first stitch that you see right here is actually our slip stitch. I know it was at the end of the last round, but because we turned, it's our very first stitch in the round now. So I'm going to skip it, and I'm going to start in this stitch right here. So I'm going to double crochet in that first stitch. And I'm going to double crochet in each stitch around my sleeve. I'm at the last stitch of my round two for my sleeve. This last stitch um, we're actually going to be working into. Usually when you work in rounds, you skip this last one because it's the slip stitch. But because we turned, our slip stitch was at the beginning of the round and we skipped it there. So this right here is our last stitch of the round. So I'm going to join to my first double crochet with a slip stitch. And I'm going to repeat that round two until my sleeve is the correct length for the size that I'm making. And all the lengths for the sleeves and the, uh, the row counts are all in the written pattern. You can find that in the sizing guide in the written pattern. 
or you can just continue this pattern until your sleeve is about an inch and a half short of what you want your sleeve to be. So if you, so you can make it any length that you want, just make it about an inch and a half shorter than what you'd like because we're gonna be adding a cuff at the end that looks just like the ribbing along the bottom of our sweater. So chain two, turn and double crochet around. Repeat that until you get to the length that you need for your size or until it's an inch and a half short of your desired length. So I have finished my sleeve all the way to the correct row for the size that I'm making. I just did those rounds of double crochet all the way down to about my wrist. Now what we're gonna do in the next rounds, we're gonna tighten this up by doing some decreases and then we're gonna make a cuff that looks a lot like the ribbing um, along the bottom edge of our sweater. So for the next row, get my yarn situated here, you're gonna chain just one and turn and we're gonna work some single crochet decreases to make this tighter around our wrist. So I'm gonna single crochet in this first stitch and then I'm gonna single crochet two together over the next two stitches. So I'm gonna insert my hook in this stitch, insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now I'm gonna insert my hook in the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three. So I just turned those two stitches into one with a, a single crochet two together or a single crochet decrease. So I'm gonna continue repeating that all the way around my sleeve. I'm gonna do one single crochet and then a single crochet two together. regular single crochet and single crochet two together. I'm going to continue repeating that all the way around. One single crochet, single crochet two together. repeat that all the way around my sleeve. I'm at the last stitch of my round and it's a single crochet two together. Um, it doesn't really matter which stitch you end on, if you end on a regular single crochet or a single crochet two together. Um, the whole point is just to tighten up um, this cuff around the wrist. So it doesn't matter which stitch you end on in the repeat. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat that round one more time. I'm gonna chain one, turn, and I'm gonna do a regular single crochet, then single crochet two together all the way around. I just finished up that round, so I'm gonna to join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. And I'm gonna chain one, turn, and this next round is a round of regular single crochet. So I'm gonna single crochet in each stitch around. And then you're going to join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. And you can see it's tightened up quite a bit from those three rounds, the two rounds of decreases and then the one regular round of single crochet. If you find that this is too tight, you can go back and undo that second row of decreases and just do a couple rows of regular single crochet if you find that this cuff is too tight. It will stretch um, once you wear it. 
So um, that's up to you. Definitely can customize that to whatever feels comfortable for you. So now we're going to make the ribbing, the cuff portion of this sleeve with a ribbing along the bottom. So we're not going to have to do any sewing. We're going to do it in row, rows this way and then connect it as we go. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So here's the end of our sleeve and I want my ribbing to be the same width as the ribbing on the body of the sweater. So I'm going to chain nine. I'm going to turn so I'm working this direction and starting in this second chain from the hook I'm going to single crochet. Oops. I'm going to single crochet all the way across this chain. You should have eight single crochet and now what I'm going to do I'm going to join to this stitch here the last row from uh, my sleeve I'm going to join to that stitch the same stitch that I chained out of I'm going to join to that with a slip stitch and that is row one of our ribbing on the cuff now I'm going to go to this stitch right here and I'm going to slip stitch up one and I'm working into this last round of the sleeve. So I'm going to insert my hook right here and slip stitch. And that kind of acts as my chain one for the next row of ribbing. So I'm going to turn and I'm going to single crochet in this first stitch. Now I'm going to single crochet back loop only in the next six. So just like we did for the ribbing for the front and back of our sweater, we're working only in the back loop. All the way to the last stitch. Now in this last stitch, I'm going to do a regular single crochet. And there's our second row of ribbing. Chain one and turn. So I'm going to repeat that again. I'm going to do a regular single crochet in my first stitch and then single crochet back loop only in the next six. And now I'm going to do a regular single crochet in this last stitch. Okay. Now I'm going to join to the next stitch here. So I did rows one, two. This is row three of my ribbing. I'm going to join to this last round of my sleeve with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to go up one to the next stitch and slip stitch to the next one. And that's my chain one for row four of my ribbing. So now I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to do a regular single crochet in this first stitch. And then single crochet back loop only in the next six. And a regular single crochet in this last stitch. Now chain one and turn. 
single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet back loop only in the next six. Oopsies. Now a regular single crochet in the last stitch. So now I see my next, I've already slip stitched to this one, so this is my next um, single crochet from the last round of my sleeve. I'm going to join to this one right here. Now I'm going to slip stitch to the next one. This is my chain one and turn my work. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around my sleeve. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably skip ahead for the rest of the cuff, um, but you can, can always go back and re-watch that section um, for the cuff of the sleeve. I'm just going to be repeating those two rows all the way around. All the way until I go all the way around and meet back up to my first row of the cuff. I have all of the rows for my cuff completed. I worked those two rows all the way until I met up with my first row. So I went ahead and I cut this, um, cut my end. I left a nice long end because I'm going to use it for sewing. I'm going to pull that through. Now I'm going to use this long end to sew this little bit closed. So I guess there is a little bit of sewing involved. All right, so I'm gonna line it up. I'm not gonna use stitch markers for this because it's just a short little space. So I'm gonna line it up. So I'm gonna insert my needle into both the top loops of the first stitch and pull it through. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way down and whip stitch it closed. I know the cuff looks a little small, but trust me, it's going to stretch and it should fit over your wrist nice and snug and just give a really cute kind of balloon sleeve look. So go ahead and weave in your ends. I'm going to push this end through to the other side so that I can weave it in on the inside. So go ahead and weave in these ends. And then you're going to repeat this sleeve pattern exactly how we just did it on the other side. So go ahead and join to your other armhole and repeat this exact sleeve pattern for the other sleeve. And there you have it. Our Every Girl sweater is all finished. So easy. It's a great beginner level pattern. Um, I hope you love it. I hope you get to wear it often and stay nice and cozy in your new Every Girl sweater.